okay guys so um, we are going to start uh, uh, the second major section uh, uh, the major topic here is frequency modulation but uh, on the way to frequency modulation we will learn something called phase modulation so basically the topic is phase modulation and frequency modulation uh, collectively they are called angle modulation because it is these two modulation techniques are connected to the angle inside the cosine so take the cosine waveform so far we have talked about cosine 2 pi fct uh, soon you will see it becomes more and more cumbersome to write 2 pi fct we will write omega ct cosine omega ct where omega c is the omega sub c is the uh, angular frequency and also it becomes necessary to write omega ct is equal to theta or like our our cosine waveform is just cos theta. So we have to think like that and you will see what happens there. Okay, so we are going to study phase modulation and frequency modulation. Uh, together they are called angle modulation or another name is exponential modulation. You will see why we call it exponential modulation because often we uh, write this cosine uh, omega ct uh, in a complex form. That's where the exponential part comes from. And then we will be studying something called narrow band frequency modulation. Then we will go to wide band frequency modulation. And the reason is, uh, unlike AM, it's not easy to generate FM. So what we do is we first generate what we call a narrow band frequency modulation, which means the bandwidth is small. And then we do something to increase the bandwidth. and. Uh, Unlike, uh, uh, remember in DSP, SP and AM large carrier modulation, if you have a message bandwidth this capital B, then the modulated signals bandwidth is 2B. It never changes. Capital B becomes 2B. But in frequency modulation, for a fixed message, fixed message bandwidth, we can have different bandwidths. If we want, we can transmit with a wider bandwidth. And that has a huge advantage because when we transmit with a wide bandwidth, we get a better performance in terms of noise. The signal to noise ratio can be increased, like the noise can be suppressed. So this is a major difference between AM and FM. In FM, by increasing the bandwidth for the same message signal bandwidth, by increasing the bandwidth, we can suppress the noise. And this is like, you, you may want to associate this with the fact that when you listen to FM station, uh, there is hardly any noise, no noise at all. Okay. Whereas AM station, sometimes you hear noise. And this is also the reason that all music stations are in FM station. When you want to listen to music, AM is most of the time talk radio and news radio all right but we it's generating fm is a little bit harder than am so if we first generate a narrow band fm and then we go to we can generate wide band frequency modulation so you can see already how many subdivisions are beginning to emerge we have to study phase modulation, we have to study frequency modulation in each. Then we have to study narrow band frequency modulation, wide band frequency modulation. Then remember in AM we did math with a single tone, a single tone doing amplitude modulation. Here we will be doing single tone FM modulation and so on. Uh, so we have to do single tone and then general case. Uh, okay. Uh, please ignore number eight. Okay. Can you guys please make a note? Because this I had to put uh, because of last term, this number eight, because I was co-teaching this course with Prof. Zhao. 
So some of the things that uh, there were nice diagrams in the slides, but please ignore number eight. You don't need to look at the slides. Okay, please let me repeat. Ignore eight. You don't need to look at the slides. Everything you need is in the my notes. Okay, so we are going to start with phase modulation. Uh, it's very simple. Look at this takes a sub c cos 2 pi f t plus gamma. This is the phase angle and vary gamma in proportion to the message signal m, m of t. So the phase modulated signal looks like a sub c cos 2 pi f t plus a constant time the message signal. So for the gamma I have written k sub p m t. Unfortunately there is no name for this. We will always call it k sub p kp we don't have any name for that so please don't ask me what is it it is just a proportionality constant okay it it could be like thousand two thousand or three thousand pi something okay so this is a number so how what is the sensitivity of the variation in gamma with mt okay this is just a constant kp is just a constant we choose uh, how much how how much do we want to vary the phase angle okay so the phase modulator signal is very simple a sub c 2 pi f c t plus k p m t where f c is the carrier frequency all right <coughs> now the frequency modulation concept is easy now i am jumping to frequency modulation so what what it says is in proportion to the instantaneous amplitude of the message signal, we are going to vary the frequency. If the message signal amplitude is high, the frequency is going to be high. The, the wave is going to go up and down fast. If it is low, it's going to be low. So there is a center frequency. So for example, but the signal I have shown here is the message signal. So this is the message signal. If you look at this, at the beginning and around this point, this point, the instantaneous value of the message signal is zero. So here, this will be at this point and this point, we will have the center frequency. So FM broad, again, think of FM broadcast. So FM as an example. So FM broadcast bands usually start, I believe, around the uh, 80 megahertz and go up to 115 megahertz okay so a good idea is to think about 100 megahertz it's like in the middle and uh, most of the popular uh, music radio station in toronto is around 110 like 89.3 fm 83 89.9 and then fm 105 used to be very famous a while ago and I think they, then they may have gone bankrupt but okay so think of 100 megahertz as the as an example of the center center frequency so here it will be 100 megahertz as the instantaneous value of the message signal increases the frequency is going to move from 100 megahertz to 100.1, 100.2, 100.3 and stuff like that and here it will go to the maximum maybe 100.7 megahertz. Then it will decrease again and here it will be. So I have given you a picture. See the frequency is higher here. And then when the instantaneous value of the message signal is negative, the frequency goes below 100 megahertz. Okay, so in FM, there is a center frequency. When the message signal uh, instantaneous value is positive, the frequency goes above that frequency. It's good to think of an example. So I keep bringing 100 megahertz. 100 megahertz. So when it is, when you have a positive uh, instantaneous value, it goes high, higher than 100 megahertz. But when it is negative, it will come down like 99.9, 99.8, 99.7 and so on. And at this point, we have a really low frequency. 
and the same thing repeats and you can see here here is when we have the lowest frequency and so on okay it's very hard to see the numbers uh, i don't want you to see the numbers here like 100 100.1 it's the frequency it's very hard to see this is just an example 100 is just an example okay so conceptually it's easy to understand frequency modulation you have a center frequency for example 100 megahertz you go up and down from that instantaneous deviation based on your message signals value instantaneous value it turns out the math is not straightforward it's not hard but it is not straightforward and we, we are in for some shock yeah, all right uh, and I want to give you some idea why it is so so far like you guys have come to third year all the electric signals you dealt with in every course uh, think about cosine omega ct it turns out this omega ct is like um, constant velocity remember we studied constant velocity or constant speed in like grade 8 or 9 physics and we learned distance traveled is equal to speed multiplied by time oh let's talk about velocity velocity multiplied by time velocity is equal to distance displacement divided by time and then grade 10 or grade 11 all of a sudden we were introduced to acceleration we were used to acceleration particularly if we were in uh, developed countries because we have all been in the car and we know when people accelerate we go jerk back and there is an accelerator pedal we are familiar with that but we haven't done the math but in grade 10 or something we were introduced to acceleration and we were told to distinguish between constant velocity and then uh, there is rate of change of velocity and change in velocity divided by time is called acceleration and then a little bit after that we studied calculus and we were told acceleration is the derivative of the velocity with respect to time so it turns out in electricity or in electrical engineering unless you take this course we have always been dealing with constant frequency so uh, when we write cosine omega sub t or 2 pi f c t, that f c is constant. We have never written down an expression for varying frequency. And that, that's going to create us, that is the new territory. So we have to do some math. It's not that hard, but it is new. Okay. So let's see. Frequency modulation theory, I have said hard just to shock you so you guys start paying attention to me and don't take this as lightly as amplitude modulation. In amplitude modulation, after doing all those delta functions and everything, all we are left with is if your message bandwidth is capital B, uh, modulated signals bandwidth is 2B. Okay. Uh, by the way, after I mark the midterms, I want to tell you something because some of you have wasted your time writing like delta at f minus fc and so on. I, I gave you so many hints. All you have to do is look at uh, how did I write my solution to the tutorial questions and in the look at the AM lecture slides. Uh, there are examples. Uh, Sometimes I ask what is the amplitude of the modulated signal at this frequency. All I did was, uh, oh, it is half times this, quarter of this and stuff like that. Because I am asking amplitude of the, uh, ampli sorry, amplitude modulated signal at a particular frequency. So you don't have to write delta, the theory, delta F minus Fc and so on. Okay. I'm just saying like you don't need to waste your time like that. All right. We, we will talk. More. Oh, I will write the solution for 
one version of the midterm and you can look at it like also i said in the exam don't explain anything in english i don't need that you guys to to a large extent you guys have done that but i still feel bad that you guys wrote delta f minus so this those things because when i wrote, showed you the solutions i didn't write them so i am an honest person why would i expect you to write that i know some other profs like do something in class and in the exam they want you to do something different but i am not like that okay so uh things are about to get a little bit hard i know like uh, these short number of people you guys never stop me and ask me any questions please feel free you you guys need to interrupt me and ask me questions okay because things are going to uh uh get hard okay first of all how to design a circuit for frequency modulator is not straightforward uh but in order to design a circuit you have to first write a mathematical expression that's what i was talking about earlier before changing the frequency in proportion to the message signal we have to define what is instantaneous frequency so remember we first studied constant velocity and then we after we studied calculus we defined instantaneous velocity and then the rate of change of the velocity similarly here we have to define instantaneous frequency so so far we only know constant frequency and we were told what is the definition of frequency in physics how many times the waves go up and down in a second that's all we know we have no idea about instantaneous frequency now when we talked about instantaneous velocity in high school in grade 12 we already know velocity is the rate of change of displacement so it is the derivative time derivative of displacement but frequency is the derivative of what it so it turns out frequency is the derivative of the angle so if you write cosine not the face angle okay everything inside this bracket so think of a signal as cosine theta of t cosine theta of t i'm not talking about the phi the face angle think of a signal as cosine theta of t and what is theta prime t differentiate theta which is a function of time with respect to time theta prime t it turns out theta prime t is the frequency because okay and i will i will show you that okay okay look at this instantaneous frequency let consider the signal cosine theta of t assume theta varies with time in a linear fashion okay i'm devil i'm explaining things so you have to come with me assume theta of t varies linearly with t for a moment then we can write theta of t is equal to a t plus b you you guys are familiar with this when something is linear we can write a x plus b a t plus b where a and b are constants but since usually we write omega t we will change a and b to omega and gamma so it is theta of t is equal to omega t plus gamma so now we can write g of t is equal to cosine omega t plus gamma or 2 pi f t plus gamma because you guys know omega is 2 pi f okay all right now I want you to let's start with this equation theta of t is omega t plus gamma i want you to differentiate both sides with respect to t so d by dt of theta of t is theta prime t if you differentiate this you get omega so it turns out if when you when you have the angle varying in a linear fashion with time the derivative is 
omega. So this, this equation should show you that in, in, in all the signals we have dealt so far, what we call the angular frequency is actually the rate of change of the angle. Do you guys see this? This is a very important revelation. Okay. The angular frequency is actually the rate of change of the angle. So from this, we are motivated to define the instantaneous angular frequency as the rate of change of the angle. Just like velocity is the derivative of displacement, angular frequency is the derivative of the ang so angle and from this it's very easy instantaneous frequency is the instantaneous sorry instantaneous angular frequency divided by 2 pi because remember this relationship omega is equal to pi f so it is nothing but 1 over 2 pi d theta over dt so this here comes uh, I am sure at least some of you have printed out the notes and printed out my notes and taking notes. One of the things in angle modulation is you are going to have a million formulas. I know in the final exam it's going to be open book. You will have all of that, but you are going to start having million formulas. So the first formula to highlight is this, the definition of instantaneous frequency. It is 1 over 2 pi derivative of the angle okay so i have given you an example okay consider the signal cosine t square plus 20 i know you have never seen t square plus 20 inside cosine but it doesn't matter theoretical so that the frequency of the signal varies linearly with time and find the instantaneous frequency at times two okay so theta of t is t square plus 10 t. So instantaneous frequency is 1 over 2 pi the derivative. 1 over 2 pi the derivative is 2 t plus 10. And you can see this is a linear expression in t. Therefore, we have proved frequency of this signal varies linearly with time. Okay. Now the second part, if I add 2, I just take the first expression and put t is equal to 2. If I add 2. Okay, and by the way, the unit is we start with hertz. Okay, guys. All right. Any questions so far? Are you guys okay? All right. So I'm going to continue. All right. Now I have a more complicated example. The instantaneous frequency of the signal g of t blah blah is denoted by f i t. Find f i at this number. The reason I keep subbing in numbers is because remember uh, the last three offering of this course, all the exams were multiple choice. Uh, but also plugging in numbers increases your understanding. Okay. Uh, your final will also be written and you have to upload everything to D12. Uh, okay. So theta from the this equation, I find out what is theta which is this and I differentiate but put 1 over 2 pi 1 over 2 pi inside the derivative of this is just this number and then here uh, you have to differentiate 10 to the cube sine this so the answer is cosine this guy and then the derivative of this and the derivative of this is uh, 2 pi times 700 so there is 2 pi times 700 then 10 to the 3 cosine this. Uh, then what did I do? I simplified. So I divide by the 2 pi, 2 pi and uh, what happens? Yeah, this 2 pi get cancelled and this 2 pi get cancelled. So I get 10 to the 6 and then 710 to the 3 cos 2 pi and the rest is just plugging in and then using Google to get this number. Okay, that's it. Okay, I explained you this uh, last in the lecture before the midterm. Fundamental theorem of calculus. To proceed further, we need this. So basically, 
if you are integrating a function from a constant or negative infinity, it doesn't matter, to a variable and making another function. So this is basically the area under the graph f from t is equal to a to t is equal to x. Remember for this graph, x axis is t axis, not x. So you are going from t is equal to a to t is equal to x. So the area under a graph from t is, this is fixed, x, t is equal to x is here. You can vary this like this and the area will increase or decrease and you get a function. So Newton proved, and I think Leibniz proved at the same time probably, that the derivative of this area function is nothing but this function, but you have to put x in it, g prime x, f of x. So you have the first example here, if g of x is defined like this, g prime x is cos x, you just plug this in. If g of u is a t u this, you just put u here. If g of t is and you have x here, you replace the x with t. So go through these examples and make sure you understand this. This is very important. And then we have an application from this course. Suppose g of t is omega c t plus 0 to t m alpha d alpha. What is g prime t? g prime t is the derivative of this is omega c and the derivative of this is replace the alpha with t because this will this is going to come soon in the frequency modulation theory okay now i have another example to make you comfortable find the frequency of the signal find the instantaneous frequency okay so I, we already did a question like this so this is your theta of t theta of t is this Instantaneous frequency is 1 over 2 pi and the derivative and the derivative of this is easy and the derivative of this is this times You have to use fundamental theorem of calculus to differentiate this so you put the t here which is here Okay, and then this is just simplification 2 pi cancels and plug in the numbers. That's it Okay now we come to proper frequency modulation theory okay so take a deep breath if you have coffee or tea please take a sip okay so we have we want to find a cosine waveform which looks like a sub c cosine theta t where the instantaneous frequency is centered at omega c, that's just a notation, but varies in proportion to the message signal m, m t. That is the idea of frequency modulation. I already told you there is a center frequency and the frequency must vary in proportion to the instantaneous value of the message signals. But we know instantaneous angular frequency is denoted by i mean it is defined by d theta over dt so this angular frequency has to be centered at omega c and vary in proportion to mt and the proportionality constant now is denoted by k sub f okay so in Frequency modulation, instantaneous frequency, this is what we want. We didn't derive this, okay? We want the instantaneous frequency to be centered at omega c and go up and down from that center frequency by this amount, k sub f mt. Again, there is no name. We will call it km. f is for frequency and the earlier one, k sub p is for phase angle. Now, it turns out the solution to this differential equation is this so you can see this makes sense okay start with this equation you want to isolate because you want to find this equation so from d theta or dt you want to recover theta so you need to integrate if you integrate this you get omega ct if you integrate you have something like this usually when we solve differential equations we didn't put the definite integral. We 
we put the integral sign and then we integrate did the integration without the values but put a plus plus c the integrating constant and then we used initial conditions to find the constant but this is an easy way and we can prove this is correct by in the reverse direction to make sure this is the correct solution i want you to differentiate this with respect to time and make sure when you differentiate this you get this so let's differentiate this the derivative of this is omega c the derivative of this is kf then you have to use the fundamental theorem of calculus put this here you get empty so very easily the differentiate in this we get d theta, d theta or dt is this. Therefore, it is correct that to say that this is the solution of this differential equation. Okay, you have to go back and verify. That's the fastest way. In some textbook and some slides, you may see negative infinity, but I, I just want to start at zero. We can always say our message signal starts at zero when you turn, turn the electronic circuit on so there is no need to worry about negative infinity we'll deal with zero okay all right i talked about this so now we have an expression for the angle in the instant uh, sorry frequency modulation case so i go put that for theta t and i have this and what did i do here is something to oh for omega c, I have written 2 pi f c t. That's it. I didn't change this. So finally, I have the equation for the fm modulated signal. A sub c cosine 2 pi f c t plus k f 0 to t m lambda d lambda. What is m here? m of t. m of t is the message signal. Here we just use a new notation m lambda d lambda. I mean, we have renamed the variable. But other than that, message signal remains m of t okay guys so this is how some of you may think yeah compared to am signal or dsps signal this looks horrible yeah there, there is some slight complications so this is the next box you want to uh, highlight okay now you guys may have already seen this the phase modulation and the frequency modulation are closely related look at the equation for phase modulation the angle is uh, 2 pi fct plus k t mt the phase angle is the phase angle was sitting here i think it was gamma for gamma we write k p m t now for the fm the angle business is slightly complicated 2 pi f c t plus k f time integral of m lambda d lambda. So compare these two equations. Forget about the actual a c cos business. Focus on the angle. Maybe I should have written it first. But focus on the angle. Angle instantaneous angle for the phase modulation is 2 pi f c t plus k sub p m t. For frequency modulation, 2 pi f c t plus k sub f integral of the message signal. <coughs> this is this is very important connection. So it seems if you have a circuit that does phase modulation, you can use that circuit to produce frequency modulation. All you do is instead of feeding the message signal directly. To the phase modulated circuit you integrate it and send it and of course you have to adjust the k but you can always tinker with the circuit so this is just a constant so if you have a phase modulation circuit <coughs> you already have a frequency modulation circuit all you need is you need an integrator but integrating small audio signal small amplitude audio signal is very easy i am sure when you guys studied op amps remember 741 op amp you studied how to integrate it integrating and differentiating uh, audio signals is easy so basically if you have a phase modulating circuit 
you can draw a block diagram for the frequency modulating circuit you just differentiate uh, sorry integrate the message signal similarly if you have a circuit for frequency modulation what you can do is instead of this m lambda you can give the derivative of the m lambda so there will be the derivative of m lambda that get cancels with that integration and you will get the phase modulation okay and this relationship is important and i i think somewhere here i have a diagram that explains that now here what i have done is just substituted this for the angle and substituted this for the angle so this whole thing need to get you know something if you know what is theta then you can always write this what is 5 pm and 5 fm because all you are going to do is write a sub c cos and then plug these angles into the square bracket so you know what you highlight all of this but what you really need to memorize is these two now because these two look similar and also we don't want to do this integral thing in our math again and again because soon we have to do even more math so instead of writing this integral again and again we have a shorthand notation for that the integral of the message signal is denoted by a a of t so if we denote the integral by a of t then the two angles look so similar one is 2ff ct plus kf at that is for fm for pm for phase modulation it is kpmt <coughs> okay so things are piling up more and more notation more and more things are you guys okay so far please feel free to interrupt me and ask me questions okay okay so let me repeat the this is the equation for fm this is the equation for hi question uh somebody is just moving things uh, and uh, the only difference is the constants have different name this is kp this is kf uh, the fm equation the message signal is integrated okay all right let's see how this is going to complicate more okay now we are going to differentiate and develop starting with this uh, angles for fm and pm we will differentiate these angles and develop formulas for instantaneous frequency in fm and pm and memorize them okay so look at what happens here so this is for the fm the angle is this i differentiate this there's one over two pi one over two pi we want to differentiate this it becomes oh this is just a, i have just plugged in here and you want to differentiate two pi fct so it becomes two pi fc and then fundamental theorem says kfmt so you can cancel this so the instantaneous frequency of fm is center frequency plus one over two pi kfmt so sometimes students forget this one over two pi careless error okay uh, by the way uh, i i haven't started marking your exams uh, I am not going to take off any marks for careless errors. Okay, so if you are in the right path to the solution, we have the right uh, expression there. If you wrote like this square over this square plus two times this square, if those numbers are correct and then along the way to the final number you made a careless error, I'm going to give you full marks. Okay, I'll be lenient with uh, uh, careless errors. Okay, uh, so this is why I told you to show me the steps. But uh, some of you have left some question totally blank. So you are, <laughs> I can't give you any marks. It's going to be zero. And then some of you have, uh, for, for example, the frequency mixing question. Uh, 
I went over that so many times. Cosine A times cosine B will give you cosine A plus B and cosine A minus B. So if you want to add two frequencies, you have to use the mixer, which is a multiplier. So instead of saying you send frequency F1 and frequency F2 and put a multiplication sign, people have said just add. What is cosine A plus cosine B? It is just cosine A plus cosine B. If you add two frequencies, cosine 100 hertz and cosine 200 hertz, it is just two separate signals. But if you multiply cosine 100 frequency and cosine 200 frequency, or let's use another example, cosine 100 and 300, then you are going to get cosine 100 plus 300, which is 400 and cosine 300 minus 100, which is 200. So you have to multiply. And I have shown you that in the diagram, but I quickly looked at some people's exam. They have said, okay, you want to generate 100 kilohertz signal. You have given me 20, 30, and 50. Uh, just send them and put a big box and add, they have said. Okay. Now there, I don't know how much marks to give you. I will give you some marks because whenever, you know, this is another another trick. I don't know whether you guys learned this. Even if you don't know anything about a question, if you write something, the professors uh, feel bad and they will give you something. Don't leave any question blank. Give, give some indication that, you know, you tried. So, the question I just mentioned, if you are just putting a big box and adding those things, uh, in a perfect world, that deserves zero. But I, I will give you some marks because you tried. Okay, but anyway, I wanted to emphasize that's a totally wrong answer. All right. Uh, so, uh, in summary, the Instantaneous frequency in the FM case is center frequency plus 1 over 2 pi KFMT. And here I am doing this, uh, what? what's happening? Okay. Yeah, now I am doing the instantaneous frequency in phase modulation. So where is the angle for phase modulation? This is this. If I differentiate this, I get... 2 pi, 2 pi fc plus kp m prime t. So I am dividing by 1 over, I mean 2 pi. So it is kp over 2 pi, just like this, but m prime t. So look at this. And the, so please put a highlight for these two. And another thing is, um, first of all, in AM, there is nothing much to understand except that formula. Uh, cos square x is half of 1 plus cos 2x and cosine a times cosine b is half of cos a plus b and cos a minus b and then there is Fourier transform. Uh, the Fourier transform of cos is half here and half there and when you modulate there is another half. That's it. The whole theory is finished for DSPSB and then you need to know how to calculate the power. Here, the formulas keep piling up. Unless you understand where the formulas come from, uh, things may become very sh shaky soon. And that is really true in the previous years where you can't look at anything during the exam, but this, <laughs> you guys are lucky because the whole notes is going to be in front of you. Okay. All right, but anyway, Please try to understand what is going on. This is very important for the final exam, okay? Uh, especially if you want to get A+. plus. Okay, if you just want to pass the course, I think it is easy, very easy. All right. So instantaneous frequency for FM is center frequency plus KF over 2 pi MT. For phase modulation, it is almost the same expression. Message signal replaced with the derivative. Okay, but here is the uh, derivation. So put a uh, yellow highlight here. All right. Now, 
carrier frequency deviation a bunch of deviations okay bunch of uh, formulas so earlier i said let us say you have a radio station at 100 megahertz when the instantaneous value of the message signal is positive the frequency will be slightly higher than 100 megahertz say let's say 100.1 then it is a little bit more high so it is 100.2 now you can't go too far because if you come to like 100 and 102 you are probably going to interfere with the next station which may be at 102 so i i don't think there is anything at fm 100 actually but there is fm 99.3 so the station at fm 99.3 if the frequency goes too far it will interfere with fm 102.5 so this how much your frequency deviates the maximum value of the frequency deviation is important so we call that maximum carrier frequency deviation but we are lazy so often we ignore the maximum we just say carrier frequency deviation but we mean the maximum carrier frequency deviation so let's go here and look at what happens let's look at the frequency modulation this is the center frequency how far it's going to deviate from the center so look at here what is the maximum value of this and assume mt is positive so the maximum value of this will happen at the peak value of the message signal right and so that's the formula i have here the maximum carrier frequency deviations kf over 2 pi the peak value of this but then we have to also look at the negative side so the peak value is defined as the maximum value of the absolute value of the message signal so delta f is always positive because this is positive so what we think is if mt swings up like two volts but at the bottom it goes to negative three volt then we have to use negative three here right so negative three but the sorry it becomes three so the peak value is three okay so you have to look at the positive swing and the negative thing and then make give so let us say a signal goes from <coughs> up high to three volt down up to minus 5 then m peak is 5 remember this is the absolute value okay similarly if you look at here for the phase modulation the maximum value of this you have to think of the peak value of m prime for phase that's it okay so this is important all right and we just derive this from here but the derivation is so simple i didn't make a big deal out of it now there is something also else which is called this is purely a definition we are not deriving it the deviation ratio is defined as the maximum carrier frequency deviation divided by the bandwidth of the message signal capital b is the bandwidth of the message signal this ratio is going to become very important uh, later when we calculate the bandwidth of the frequency modulated signal okay now i want to there is a small issue there and we, we will talk about that when people started broadcasting in fm they were they were in shock and uh, we will go over that in a moment um, okay so this is a very simple for the message signal shown below find the carrier frequency deviation uh, if kf is this so since they have talked about kf this is a frequency modulation question okay kf so we are going to use the frequency modulation equation maximum carrier frequency deviation is kf mp over 2 pi so we first look at what is the peak value this is i believe the peak value is going to be 1.5 because this is bigger than this see here this is under 
here it is negative 1.5 in the absolute value it becomes 1.5 so let's see if our solution is uh, kf over 2 pi times 1.5 1.5 yes kf over 2 pi times 1.5 okay so there is an example now this is a slightly different question find an angle modulated signal is given by this by the way this em stands for exponential modulation remember uh, angle modulation is called also exponential modulation so i say angle modulation but then i use em we don't because otherwise we have to put am phi am that will be really confusing with phi am means amplitude modulation large carrier so angle modulation whenever we give you a question where we don't tell you whether it is fm or am you will call it angle modulation but we will use the exponential modulation notation because we don't want to write am here so uh, so basically you have to read this question in the following way we don't this is a signal that could be fm or am sorry sorry pm or a fm this could be phase modulated signal or frequency modulated find the carrier frequency deviation delta f so here for this question we cannot use these formulas because we don't know whether it is fm or pm this is the reason i told you earlier fm is i mean this angle modulation chapter is a different animal unless you understand what is going on you won't be able to do certain questions it's not always the formulas you can't rely on the formulas all the time so for this question we start from the fundamentals we derive we write what is the angle differentiate and then find what is how maximum can it go from the center frequency so let's write the angle i just copied all these things here instantaneous frequencies 1 over 2 pi derivative and the derivative is 2 pi this and then i have to bring this to the front and then sine becomes cos then i simplified after i simplified my instantaneous frequency looks 10 to the 6 plus this thing so you can guess 10 to the 6 must be the center frequency and the frequency is is going to go up and down from this 10 to the 6 which by the way is how much 10 to the 6 1 million thousand uh, thousand uh, thousand no no this is 1 megahertz sorry so, so the center frequency is 1 megahertz plus cosine is going to make it go up and down so the deviation is what is the maximum value of this the maximum value of this cosine signal is its amplitude which is 700 times 10 to the 3 which is 700 kilohertz okay guys or you could say what is the peak value of this which is this right okay so this is an important example okay so the bandwidth of the angle modulated wave uh, so let let me quickly go to the frequency modulation equation and explain you something okay <clears throat> look at this i want you to focus on this equation so 100 day, about 100 years ago when they started fm uh, broadcast or fm generation they thought uh, this bandwidth business if you have a station at uh, 99.3 how far it is going to go up is very easy to determine they thought if the frequency deviation is 3 megahertz uh, let's let's use a let's use some nice numbers assume your station centered at 100 megahertz and your frequency deviation is 2 megahertz and how did you get that you plug in the peak value of your message signal they thought when you broadcast the frequencies will vary between 98 and 102 yes that is true your frequency varies between 92 and 
102. They thought that means the spectrum, Fourier spectrum will be some, uh, you know, uh, amplitudes centered at FC and between 98 and 102. So the actual transmitted frequency varies between 92 and 102. They thought, therefore, spectrum, you will see in the spectrum analyzer between 92, 98 and, sorry, 98 and 102. They were wrong. They saw the spectrum everywhere, like 100 on less than 100, it, it went forever, but after a while it is close to zero and above 100 it went forever but of course after a while it is too low to be seen in the spectroscope at that time so they were shocked that theoretically speaking the fm bandwidth is infinity okay because they thought the frequency is varying actually only between 98 and 102 so how is there is a spectrum at 97? How how come there is a spectrum an amplifier uh, frequency component at 103, 104, 105, or 103.1? It's a continuous spectrum. Now what happened? The reason is okay, and uh, if you look at somewhere else in the textbook, the explanation is so complicated. It's don't even bother to read that. The simple intuitive reason is the following. Yes, your frequencies are, if you look at in a, you, you, when you think about the frequencies, you say the frequencies are only between 98 and 102, but it is not a constant 98 and a constant 102, or constant 100, it is varying. So when frequency varies, it is a totally different animal. So that's so even though you think of as the frequency, the instantaneous frequency values only take values between 98 and 102, they are changing. And when you change how to calculate the spectrum, we haven't done that because in signal sense systems, the frequencies are constant. So we only know how to calculate the spectrum for constant frequency signals. But here the frequency is changing. Remember, this is very important. Earlier I said, so far we have never encountered an electrical signal whose frequency is changing. Okay, talk like, um, think about, uh, okay, anyway, let's not get into too much details. But so they found then, uh, some people did some calculation and proved, yes, it is in fact infinity. The spectrum is everywhere. But after a while, we can neglect those values because the amplitude of the spectrum is so small. So we have an approximate formula for the uh, FM bandwidth, which we will probably talk about in the next lecture. But first, we are going to derive the theoretical bandwidth according to math what is the bandwidth and uh, i am going to explain it a little bit and probably i will go over that again next time because it's complicated all right so in order to derive the bandwidth of the angle uh, modulated waves what we do is uh, by the way from this point onwards most of the time we will deal with FM and we will ignore PM. Okay, so the original part un until section eight, you have to focus on phase modulation as well. From now onwards, we will focus on FM because if we want to concentrate on both, it's it's going to be too much, too many formulas. So we will focus on FM from point nine, section nine. Okay, so you guys know the FM modulated wave is given by A sub C cosine omega C T plus K F A T. What is A, A, A of T? It is the integral of the message signal. Now, 
we want to expand this in a power series but instead of working with cosine we would cosine does have a power series uh, but then we have to deal with a plus b whole square a plus b whole cube that's difficult but a shortcut is uh, go to complex numbers and consider f hat fmt which is a sub t e to the j omega ct plus k of t this is we are just making this up why because the real part of this is this one this has a complex part and real part e to the j theta is e to the e to the j theta is equal to cos theta plus j sine theta so if you take the cos part it is cos omega ct plus k alpha t so the real part of this complex number is what we want so we will first expand the complex number and at the end we will take only the real part okay so we are just making this up why because what we want happens to be the real part of this we can ignore the imaginary part so the power series for e to the x is this you guys may remember e to the x is equal to 1 plus x plus i should have written it with z because this is a complex number <laughs> it doesn't matter okay so what we do is we consider this but we first split this we write the ac to the gc omega ct times e to the j kfc because remember uh, e to the n plus m is e to the n times e to the n. now we keep this and this part i expand it in using the power series for e to the x so 1 plus x then it is x square but j square is negative 1. That's why the j disappeared here, negative 1. And then j cube is negative j. You guys remember j cube is negative j and so on. And then what do you, what do I do? At this point, I write the Euler's formula. Right, replace this with cosine omega ct plus j sine omega t. Then I multiply it out. But... I only concentrate on the real part. So, why? Because my original signal is the real part of this. So, which is the real part of this. So, the first real part is AC cos omega t times 1. Yeah, I have that here. And anyway, I have pulled out AC. The second real part is, look at this J. This J and this J will become negative 1 because j square is negative 1. So the second real part is kf a t sin omega c t with a negative because j is negative 1. And then this multiplies this. Do I have this? Yeah. Half negative k square a square cos omega c t. And the next one is this multiplies this and so on. Okay, now, you guys, please later on, go through this and make sure you understand where is the j, where j, j square becomes negative 1 and so on. And also try to go over this. Uh, uh, this is what we want, but we wrote a complex number whose real part happens to be this. And then we dealt with the complex part. We did some clever manipulation. Then went back to the real part of it and obtained this. That is math. But now something very important from uh, electrical engineering of physics. If you look at this signal, the if you look at the first two part, it looks like AM large carrier. Forget about the minus. Because AM large carrier is the carrier signal plus the DSP signal. Message signal multiplied by the carrier. But there is a difference. Yes, I know. This is not the message signal. This is the integrated message signal. I agree. And instead of modulating by cosine, we are modulating by sine. Okay. Now, look at this one. What is this? This is modulation by same carrier but you are multiplying by a square here so 
if you look at all of these these are dsp signals dsp signal dsp signal dsp signal but sometimes we modulate by sine sometimes we modulate by cosine and also message signal is integrated here it is here it is integrated and then squared here it is integrated and cubed so now if you remember i said in the last lecture before the midterm modulating by sine the bandwidth is exactly like the dsp sp signal because what happens to the spectrum is it's only the complex part it's actually get rotated so if you are only looking at the amplitude in dsp sp modulation instead of sine if you use cosine the bandwidth is exactly the same 2b so here the bandwidth of this signal is two times the bandwidth of the integrated signal but in the same lecture i showed you when you integrate or differentiate bandwidth doesn't change so a of t has the same bandwidth as m of t and what is our notation for m of t bandwidth of m of t capital b so this has the bandwidth capital b and when we modulate it it becomes 2b okay remember this is 2b this is just a spike at fc and negative fc just like am large carrier this the spectrum of this is going to be spread over a width of 2 capital b here modulation by cosine so it's going to be 2b but what is 2b is the bandwidth of a square remember in the same lecture we learned when you square bandwidth doubles so integration didn't change b it is still b but this is changing so the bandwidth of this is 2b and modulation makes it 4b sorry yeah so this is 2b this is 4b and similarly you can see this is 6b so <laughs> this is how so what you have now is fc central frequency there is b there is 2b there is sorry there is 2b there is 4b there is 6b it never ends so we just proved the theoretical bandwidth of the angle, angle modulated waves is infinity however under certain conditions these terms become smaller and smaller after a while we can ignore them that is the reason the station at 99.3 does not interfere with 102.5 because these terms become smaller and smaller negligible okay all right so let's see i whatever i said is explained in it, written here but i have a diagram for you okay guys b this is the message bandwidth integrated nothing changes the one expression gives you 2b the other one gives you 4b the other one by the way this what is the bandwidth of this spectrum it is 6b at this time you don't add 2b to 4b to 6b okay that's only the amplitudes get added so when you add this the actual spectrum it's going to look like this and at this point it's going to jump and then it's going to come here and jump here so you, because you have to add the vertical values but horizontally nothing changes if if you can ignore anything after 6b the bandwidth is this much there was an easy question in the exam uh, one signal had bandwidth 2000 hertz the other signal has bandwidth 3000 hertz what is the bandwidth of the two signals added so the amplitude will increase but the maximum is if one has bandwidth 2000 and the other one has 3000 then it is 3000 okay this that should have been obvious from signals and systems and i also did some review i know i i gave you a diagrams about bandwidth you have to figure out what happens when you add two signals if if this has to be added to this and this has to be added to this does anything get spread out horizontally no it's just vertically go up goes up 
I didn't ask you the amplitude of the spectrum. I just asked you what is the bandwidth. Bandwidth is just this. So, unfortunately, it doesn't end at 6B. It is 8B, 10B. But as you can see, the height decreases. So, after a while, we can ignore it. But theoretically, FM bandwidth is infinity. Okay. All right. So, let's see. Now, I think I will stop at this point. Uh, section 10. So, someone named Carson <coughs> figured out after which point you can ignore it. Okay? And he came up with a short formula for FM bandwidth. And the FM bandwidth is given as 2 times, remember that maximum carrier deviation, maximum carrier deviation plus message bandwidth. <laughs> now, this approximation here, please cut it out. We will never use this. Uh, yeah, the, this is, I'm not going to worry about, you can see if capital F is really bigger than B, then we can say this is to this. Okay, forget that. Now, remember we had the deviation ratio beta as this. If you plug in here and manipulate it, you have another formula for FM bandwidth. So, this is the practical bandwidth, an approximation for FM OPM. By the way, this is the same formula for PM, but I am not going to ask you the PM bandwidth. After section 8, I, I am not going to talk about um, first modulation. Okay, so using this, you can plug in here. And here is an example based on this. You guys can, let me quickly go through. Message signal has peak value this and bandwidth this. KF is given, find the bandwidth of the XF signal. So I first calculate the maximum frequency deviation using the formula I gave you before. Once I have that, <coughs> I use Carson's rule to estimate the bandwidth. So please remember, FM bandwidth cannot be calculated exactly because you have to go plug in this and you never know this is going when you can ignore it. Okay, you need to have, do a lot of calculation. Instead, we don't have time for that. We often use this method, Carson's formula. But you have to remember it is an estimate. It's not an exact value, exact correct, exactly correct number. Okay, so what else is here? <laughs> Okay, we have one more example. I, I am thinking let's finish this too. So, if we look at this question, this is why I said fundamentals and knowing how to derive things are important. An angle modulated with carrier frequency is described by the equation. So, you don't know whether it is FM or PM. Find the power of the modulated signal. Find the maximum frequency deviation, deviation ratio, and then do an estimate of the modulated signal. The power, you know something very important in FM, the power is, power does not depend on your message signal. It is just whatever the carry amplitude you choose. This is a cosine waveform of this amplitude. Whatever happens with the frequency doesn't matter. Power is A square over 2. I gave you this formula before. So it is 50. The instantaneous frequency, you take this and differentiate and divide by 2 pi. So the derivative of is 2 pi fc. The derivative of this is 5 times 3000 times cos. And then the derivative of this is 10 times 2000 pi times sine. Okay, something important is going to happen here. Not here. Okay, so fi is you div divide by 2 pi, so it is fc plus this over 2 pi, and here 2 pi cancels. The maximum frequency deviation, this is very important, is what is the peak value of this? So earlier I s said that one place, I'm not sure if I said that, to find the peak value of two sinusoids, you can add the peak value of the two signals as long as the signals are orthogonal. 
and we know they are orthogonal because this is sine and cos because sine and cos are always orthogonal but in the first lecture i said even if it is cos and cos as long as the frequencies are different they are orthogonal so whenever the frequencies are different you can add the peak values to find the peak value of the signal or even if the frequencies are the same as long as it is sine and cos they are orthogonal okay so we add this value to this value to find the maximum frequency deviation okay because the peak value of these sig two signals is this plus this because this signal and this signal are orthogonal all right now message signal bandwidth is given as 1000 hertz in the question oh hold on that we have to figure out so how do we know so this must be either the integral of the message signal or the message signal but even if it is the integral when you integrate the bandwidth doesn't change so we can figure out the bandwidth using this if you look at this bandwidth of this is 3000 divided by 2 pi and the bandwidth of this is 2000 so <coughs> 3000 divided by 2 pi is smaller than 1000 sorry this is 2000 the, the frequency of this is 1000 so the bandwidth is this by the way i will probably explain that in detail in the next next lecture when you have only one cosine waveform or sine waveform we don't say the bandwidth is zero we say the bandwidth is up to that frequency for example if you have a cosine waveform of 500 hertz i know in the fourier spectrum you have a spike here and spike here but we consider the bandwidth to be what frequency did i say 500 hertz if you have a cosine waveform from 500 hertz the bandwidth is 500 hertz so this has a particular bandwidth this has a particular bandwidth but i told you when you add two signals you pick the bandwidth of these three signal is the widest one you don't go at the band 2b to 6b it is the widest one so here this this has thousand hertz bandwidth this has 3000 divided by 2 pi which is less than thousand so this has the highest bandwidth say of i say message bandwidth is thousand so this is derived from here i didn't bother to write any explanation because i had to write a lot of things in english okay i'll explain this again next time so i can calculate the actually i have everything i want to calculate the bandwidth by unnecessary calculate the deviation ratio do they say save yeah they wanted you to calculate deviation then to calculate uh, bandwidth i use the carson rule <coughs> and i just plugged in the values i have okay guys and then <coughs> we will go over this we will i will go over this example again and this example next time and then we will move on to uh, more things on uh, frequency modulation in the next class okay all right that's it for